Cheers, guys. Apex911, welcome to the Elitist Geek and the first in my virtual reality gaming series. What's going to set this apart from some other, you know, VR gaming videos out there is that we're going to look at not just the gameplay, but what do you need to do to be able to ensure that you can enjoy your virtual reality experience? Are there tweaks to make it look better? How do you make it look better? Um, performance considerations, all that kind of stuff before you get to the game. So probably what a lot of these videos are going to be is they're going to be two-parters. Unless I can get it really short, you know, within like the 10 minute mark, it's going to be part one dealing with the technical how to set it up and then part two is the gameplay itself and the fun stuff associated with that. What I thought I would do for this first video is talk about the game I've been driving you guys nuts with the last few weeks. You guessed it, Elite Dangerous. But, but hang on, before you hit stop, hear me out on this. I'm going to be talking about things that will improve other games as well, not just Elite. And I'll include those in the timeline. So if you don't want to hear about Elite, fine. Go to the timeline below and you're going to see what I'm talking about. And some of those options will help you for other games. As with all the videos, it's platform agnostic. Uh, you know, any game related videos that is, this is about the games, full stop, whether you got a Rift, Vive, AMD, NVIDIA. Okay, maybe if you've got an Intel, I can make fun of you and mock you, but not if you got one of the other ones. <laughs> I think that's fair, because if you got an Intel, well, we won't even get into that right now. Anyways, so Elite Dangerous. Settings for VR games in general. On my screen, you're going to see I've got, and I'll just move it over here a little bit, global settings. Whether you have AMD or NVIDIA, you're going to have global settings. What I recommend is wherever possible, let the game decide. So you can see here, anti-aliasing, I've turned it off. I've let aliasing modes be determined by the game by selecting application controlled. The game maker themselves may have a better way of doing something. They know what's going to make their game work better. Likewise, VR uh, devs for VR games and the hardware people behind them are going to know what settings uh, are best. And when we look at the elite side of the equation, I'll show you those as well. But for the purpose of this, whether you have an AMD or an NVIDIA, this is what I recommend. Again, virtual reality gaming only. If you've got other types of games, I don't recommend this setting necessarily. It's just these graphical options don't quite operate the same way uh, in virtual reality. Sometimes they work with no appreciable benefit because the experience is so different from what it's doing. And other times it's just the performance penalty is too high. Where possible, I'll try to separate those, okay? So global settings, let the program decide. That's pretty much it for there. There was a lot of talk yesterday uh, going around about the HTC Vive and super sampling. That's what we're gonna look at now, okay? Before we get into that, so let's open the file. Let's just bring it up. Super sampling. What the hell is that? I'll say it's a form of aliasing. And then you guys are going to say the ones that don't know what the hell is aliasing. So let's start from scratch super quick. You draw something to the screen. So a game draws the game world to the screen. Anytime you see lines or curves and they're pixely, like jagged lines, that's a game that could benefit from anti-aliasing. The jaggedness is called alias, aliasing. It's when something doesn't look smooth. Traditionally, that gets solved through, you guessed it, the anti-aliasing uh, graphical options, which apply brute force smoothing techniques. They usually come at a performance penalty, but give you a smoother line, but doesn't quite always look that great right and like I said it has a performance penalty what super sampling does is because it's also a form of anti-aliasing think of it this way so you're drawing a line on a screen the higher that resolution the higher resolution I draw that line in the smoother it's gonna look because the pixels are so so small your eye doesn't see the jaggedness right what's 
super sampling does is it internally renders, and renders is just a fancy word for, for draw, it renders that line or scene at a higher resolution, substantially higher, one time, two times, three, four times higher, so that it can benefit from all those extra pixels at that higher resolution and revise the calculations needed to make that line smooth. Once it has all that detective work done, it draws the final product to the screen. That's super sampling in a nutshell. Through this text file, which I'll include in the description link for Vive owners, because Rift already have this, this is a Steam option called Render Target Multiplier, and I've got it set to 2.0. Lower numbers for slower cards, 960s, um, 7970s, etc., R9s. 2.0, 1.5 and 2.0 are your beefier cards. So your Titans, your Furies, your 1080s, 1070s. I recommend you play with this, tweak it, try it at a couple of different ones and see if it benefits you. The reason I'm picking Elite for showing this option and tying it all together is Elite is a game that Vive owners have long complained about because on the Vive, according to them and my experience, text is blurrier and harder to read. And screenshots have shown me that in first-hand experience tells me text has been a pain. So in Elite Dangerous, you're in your space cockpit, reading stuff was blurrier, right? Part of that is because of the color of the text, which I'll also get into. That'll be the last tip. But some of that is just done and could benefit from a, a super sampling. And that's where this comes in handy. And I've tried it, it's fantastic. Everything is immediately crisper, clearer, it looks great. With one caveat, you need to make sure that you don't also have super sampling enabled in Elite. So you put it here, right? And now let's take a look at the Elite side of the equation. But before we do that, one more quick thing. The other thing to make text more legible and clearer in Elite, I talked about HUD color. I'm going to also include this link in the description. This is a website that you can go to and you can test different colors for your cockpit. It's set up based on a primary and a secondary. The primary would be the graphic for the radar, the text for the radar. The secondary would be the blip on the radar. For me, primary is green, secondary is purple. Again, way more clear than the default orange, right? That really, really helps. So I recommend you do that as well. If you've got a Vive and you find the text in Elite blurry, but you're happy with pretty much everything else, do this. If it still doesn't do it, I would also do the sampling. Regardless, I would do the sampling, but for sure, these two things, the sampling, the super sampling via that global setting and the HUD colors are the two single most important things a Vive owner can do to make Elite look super sexy. All right, then lastly, let's look at the in-game. So here you are. I've got it set to 1920, which is down here. It always defaults back, so that's why I suspect the game on a Vive only renders at 720p. But regardless, I set this just in case. So where you want to pay attention is you want to go to quality, okay? Similar to how I said let the game decide, VR people know what settings work best with their virtual reality devices. So if you go into quality, you can see it's set to custom. Notice that there's two options on the bottom, VR low and VR high. These are from the virtual reality experience people. They've gone through and said, okay, if you have a low end card, use low, high end, use high, based on these settings as we know them to work or not work well in VR. What I've done is I picked VR high for myself and then I tweaked things. Like shadows comes at a huge penalty with little benefit in this specific VR game. So I turned shadows off completely. Uh, and there's other little things that you can tweak. But the most important is if you've changed that global setting is change super sampling, which you'll see here, set to 0.65, off, turn that off. Other things like V-Sync, I always re recommend you put it on so that the graphics don't tear when you're turning. So that's pretty much it for the technical side of Elite if you're an HTC Vive owner. Even if you're not, hopefully that super sampling piece of tidbit 
um, meaning if you're an AMD or NVIDIA owner, helped you as well. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the gaming elite side of things on the flip side there. As always, guys, cheers.